Yo, what is going on guys? Horcrux here and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I will be showing you my updated controller settings, which has carried me through the Onyx tiers in both solo duo and also crossplay. I don't use comms, I don't party queue with anyone. If I can get to Onyx, anyone can. So let's get into it. Okay guys, welcome back. So to start off with, we are going to start with the most potent setting of all time because I know most of everyone only watches like one third of a video. So I'm going to try to get you the best information possible at the beginning of this video. So come all the way over here to the UI tab, go into your weapon offsets. Now I didn't realize how big a deal this was. So I had a huge issue with the sniper rifle and the rocket launcher literally taking up like half of my screen it blindsides you when you're locking down areas of control for example if you are up in sniper tower on uh, i think this is firing range or something like that if you have a heavy weapon and you're trying to lane right you literally cannot see anything to your right now my weapon offsets have been completely changed to where it is lowered completely out of my screen i'm going to have up on the screen a comparison to what it looks like stock and I want you guys to see the difference between the two. All right so as you guys can see on the left side I have the default AR and then on the right side I have my actual AR and of course these bots are absolutely trying to destroy me and you can see the difference between of the amount of information that is available to you on the screen. So this is really really helpful when you're in the sweaty lobbies where call outs are an absolute must. I mean me I don't use comms because I'm a degenerate, but uh, that's neither here nor there, so I need any vision possible to relay any information that's possible to me as well. So definitely play around with your offsets. Now I do play with a field of view of 105. You may have to tinker around with this to get the gun position that is okay for you, but as a rule of thumb on a 105 POV, I have all my offsets set to 100 and it's worked out perfectly fine just for me. Okay, so the next setting I wanted to take a look at is Auto Clamber. So this is the ability at which you can climb over objects. So I had mine turned off. So the reason I had mine turned off, let's say for example, I need to pop up and get a shot right here on a headshot. Now if I have Auto Clamber on, let's just go ahead and enable it and show you guys what I'm talking about here. What's going to happen is it's going to, it's going to cause me to do this little animation right here. I can't shoot during this like I'm trying pulling the trigger I can't so if I'm trying to snipe a headshot jumping up on this I'm not gonna be able to whereas if I have the setting turned off I'm able to just jump and get the shot off when I need it so um, although I will say auto clamber is very helpful for when you're trying to do the advanced jumps for example on this map I can't do it live because I, I have only done this correctly like three times there are a lot of jumps in Halo Infinite that are very important for example you can jump up this little guy right here and jump up here as long as you get the, to the main tail end of it like I said I've not been able to do this consistently in game because I'm trash apparently I just can't do it but yeah auto clamber is almost essential for making this jump right here now when it comes to sensitivities i'm not going to bore you guys with the perfect sensitivity setting the fact of the matter is everyone plays at their own different sensitivity i play on the highest sensitivities possible just because i'm a tweaker like that i snore adderall and chug gamma -like game fuel for breakfast lunch and dinner every day so i need to have the highest look acceleration and sensitivities as, po as possible so Look acceleration, um, I typically I advise people to keep this around 3, 4, or 5. I don't keep it at the default too. So this is the amount of, I won't say lag time, but the time it takes for you to really start the full momentum of your turn. So look acceleration, I always try to keep turned up. Again, the normal sensitivities, this is what you guys want. I'm not going to go in, into that any further. The zoom level sensitivity, again, this is based off of your base look sensitivity as well. Now, what I will look at is depending on what controller you have you do your cent your center dead zones are pretty important you want these as low as possible without introducing drift so play around with these settings to lower it and if you find that your guy isn't drifting by doing nothing but if you're doing something like this you need to raise up your dead zone until it doesn't move when you have your controller completely off or your hands off of the controller completely you need to get it to the point to where it does not move so that is the dead zones. Now there is these axial dead zones. Now I will go over these in a second. So 
The move thumbsticks you really don't have to worry too much about because you just fine tune your aim with the left thumbstick. It's not really meant, you know, other movement. These aren't really important. Now, what is important is the look thumbstick. So the center dead zone, again, depending on your controller, this will vary. The max input threshold, I highly suggest running this on zero. So zero will give you a more responsive turn. So what I mean by that is if you try to barely move your analog stick. So since I play on a very high sensitivity, it's very important for me to have these little minute moves like this. You can see my cursor barely, barely moving. The lower this is, the greater the curve is, meaning you can get more fine-tuned aiming by doing this. So that's why I like having mine super low. So if you're like a tweaker like me and you like to play on high sensitivities, I highly suggest you having this on zero. And also the dead zone plays into this as well. This will take a little bit of playing around with in your personal settings, uh, depending on your controller. When it comes to your button layout, it is very, very important for you to have your jump and melee very easy accessible so i'm using elite 2 sears controller not sponsored but uh, these are amazing controllers uh, but they do have cheap uh bump bumper sensors so if you uh want to buy one please get the warranty for this but it's important for you to be able to look jump and melee all at the same time right so if, if you're not able to do the trifecta right of this then your controller settings need turned up a little bit now i know a lot of people play claw I feel bad for you guys here in the next, when you turn 30, 35, your hands are gonna be completely shot. So I highly suggest investing in a controller if you really wanna go try hard right to have paddles on the back. So when you're jumping, it's important for you to not have to move your stick or your thumb off of your stick to your A button, which is by default, I have mine on paddles, like I said. So as long as you're able to look, jump, and melee at the same time without having to take your hands off of any buttons, then I'd say you're good to go. That's just a, a good rule of thumb. Okay, so onto the video tab. There are a few settings I would like for you guys to play around with, um, to just give it a try. On your sensory, turn blur all the way down, turn screen shake all the way down. I turn exposure up just so I can see everything like very pronounced, just so I know what I'm shooting at. Please have your speed lines turned off because it's really annoying when you're running and you have these little striations to the corner of your screen and you think it's actually a person. So sensory, I just disable all this. Some people actually go as far as disabling the vibration. I personally do not disable the vibration because it allows me to keep track of my BR shots just so I can have the optimum time to kill on my shot. So over here in the audio tab, I would suggest turning out the uh, environmental effects. You don't need to hear birds chirping and wildlife and all the distraction, distracting noises. The only thing you need to hear are weapon pickups, weapon reloads, and people's footsteps and whatever abilities that they're using. As long as you can hear those over anything else, you're good to go. So last but certainly not least, we're going to go into the UI tab. Now the UI tab, so you can change the outline colors on your opponent. So if you don't like the red, you don't like the blue teammates, you know, whatever. Well, guess what? You can change that. The color I have found that works best in most environments is this bright ass looking green. I absolutely love this green. Again, this is preference, but green sticks out in any environment. I've tried yellow, but then you get stuck on Bizarre and that stupid ass sand map and you can't see anything. Sometimes in the uh, the purple map, oh, it's got the police department, you know, whatever. There's a purple side and yellow side. Sometimes if you have your colors like pink or purple, you can't see them, right? And it, it's just annoying. I think green sticks out the very most. And then for your own team colors, I keep them as blue because it's nice, soft on the eyes. It doesn't draw too much attention, which you don't need. But the green really sticks out and you can see people out of the corner of your eyes very easily. Okay guys, so that about does it for this video. I try to keep it nice and short. If you found any information at all in this video helpful, I would appreciate a like and sub just so you don't miss any future comment from your boy Horcrux. It's been real. It's been fun. It's been real fun. Happy hunting out there guys. Good luck riding up to Onyx Rank. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.